Good evening. It is Monday, April 6th. This is Tim Ash. I'm president of the Vermont Senate here with my daily update on Vermont's response to the COVID-19 pandemic. I hope you've been able to watch the last three. So Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, each of my updates was uh, an opportunity to pass along thanks and appreciation uh, to different people and organizations and businesses in Vermont who have been stepping up and really helping their neighbors, helping community members, keep people safe, uh, going above and beyond. And uh, it really felt good to do them. I feel like uh, as people are under such stress um, and so much uncertainty and their economic lives getting uprooted, the public health scare, it's really critical um, that we um, express ourselves and support those who are uh, putting themselves in greater risk as a result of their work or their activities. So if you didn't see them live, I hope you'll go back. They're on my Facebook page or a YouTube channel. Things are getting really technologically serious around here. Today I'm going to return uh, to my more conventional updates where I try to provide uh, some useful information on what's transpired in the last 24 hours. Uh, and I'm going to have a brief a sort of special focus on the issue of people who are self-employed and independent contractors who have been waiting anxiously for the federal government to uh, follow through on the $2 trillion relief package and actually clarify how and when people are going to be able to get the benefits since they're going without any income right now. I want to start with a few uh, bigger picture updates on just a status report. First off, uh, we now have 543 positive tests since this outbreak began. Of course, that doesn't include those who have had COVID-19 but never got tested at all because their symptoms weren't very severe. And it probably also doesn't count people who uh, contracted this virus before any testing was going on and before we really appreciated its severity and how much it was spreading. 23 people have now passed away um, and while we are preparing uh, to try to do everything we can to keep the number of people being infected um, down as low as we can, um, we, we're preparing for the worst hoping that we can keep the numbers as low as possible. I hope that made sense. Uh, there are currently 28 people who are hospitalized with COVID-19 who have tested positive and their symptoms are so severe that they have been hospitalized. And another, another 63 are hospitalized who don't yet have a test result, but who have been admitted because their symptoms uh, are very severe and we suspect that they are uh, positive with COVID-19. One thing uh, that happened over the weekend, and this has confused some people because it seems that the federal government and the Department of Health have gone back and forth on this, is the State Department of Health and our governor are now recommending that everybody who uh, finds themselves leaving home to uh, take care of some essential needs like going to the grocery store, or the pharmacy, even going for a walk, anywhere where you're not going to really be able to be easily socially distanced should be wearing a cloth mask. Um, the cloth mask is not a uh, savior and protector in with 100% infallibility. Uh, what it will do is likely prevent people who have become infected but don't know it and are not yet showing symptoms from being as likely to pass it on to others. Um, this is the mask uh, that I just had a friend make for me. Uh, she was very uh, gracious to uh, make it and drop it off. And when the Senate um, returns to the State House on Wednesday, we're gonna have a skeleton crew uh, to pass a resolution allowing us to have remote voting so we don't have to keep putting ourselves in close proximity. It will feel very unusual, but I will be wearing this or another mask uh, along with my suit uh, when I show up in Montpelier, as will the rest of the members of the Senate. We expect to be there, incidentally, very briefly, just long enough so that we can um, authorize ourselves to vote remotely in the future and then get the heck out of there and return to more safe environments. Second thing I want to uh, mention, Blue Cross Blue Shield, uh, primary uh, commercial insurer in the state, announced today that they will be waiving um, all cost sharing for inpatient COVID-19 treatment. 
So previously, all of the insurers effectively said that testing will be waived uh, and uh, various emergency room services and other things would be waived. Now, all in uh, uh, patient uh, treatment, which is often very, very expensive, will also be waived. So that's uh, a bit overdue, but good news nonetheless. And then the third thing before I turn to unemployment insurance is that the governor indicated during his press conference today at 11 that it is likely he will be extending the stay-at-home uh, order and the uh, uh, declaration of emergency, which currently are in effect till April 15th. And I think the uh, expectation is that that will be extended uh, some number of weeks later. We hope, uh, obviously, that the news will be getting better during those weeks uh, and that things can be safely transitioned uh, on the way back to normal. Uh, but I think it is important that the governor signal to people that uh, while we will continue to do everything we can um, to keep the number of infections down, uh, we have to be very vigilant and shouldn't expect that someday there's going to be a light switch that goes on and then we're all back to normal. It is going to be a slow process of getting ourselves back on our feet after this. And I think it's good the governor is preparing people for that news uh, if and when it comes in the coming couple days. So now I'd like to turn uh, to the issue of unemployment insurance. And I have never in my 12 years in the Senate received a higher volume of communication from people on a single topic than I have in the last three weeks about uh, who is and who is not eligible for unemployment insurance. This is, uh, most of these calls and emails have not been coming from people who are uh, employed in more conventional settings where you get a W-2 and you've got uh, an employer who hire, who pays you on an annual basis, salary, or hourly pay. So these calls and emails are coming from people who are self-employed or independent contractors because they are normally not allowed uh, or eligible for our unemployment insurance system, but the federal government has created a new program that is effectively a stand it looks it's a it's a copycat of unemployment insurance and people who are self-employed and independent contractors will be eligible the frustrating thing is that we're about a week and a half uh, into the uh, new new uh, world order after the federal government passed its two trillion dollar relief package and what we have found is that it was easy for them to pass a two trillion dollar piece of legislation in about two days but it has now taken a week and a half and we still don't have the actual guidance and go ahead to flip the on switch and allow people to start receiving the benefits. So for all of you who are very frustrated um, and sometimes frustrated when you contact the Vermont Department of Labor, what you need to know is that the Vermont Department of Labor wants to be able to get these dollars out the door, wants to be able to tell you precisely how, el how much you're eligible for, but until the federal government gets us this uh, these details, we are in a bind where uh, we know how desperately you need the money, but we can't yet get it out the door to you because we don't have the federal permission. However, I do want to talk about a few things uh, that are uh, in somewhat encouraging, I hope. The first is that um, while you cannot go all the way through the unemployment uh, application system, since you are not yet eligible as a self-employed person or independent contractor, what you can do is fill out an initial claims form. And when I'm done with this video, I will put uh, a link to that form if you haven't already uh, uh, filled it out on the comments section uh, of this video. And once you have done that, you will have effectively gotten a big jump start. And the moment the feds give the Vermont Department of Labor the go-ahead, you will already be in the system. They will then be able to contact you and get things uh, moving in a hurry. So I really encourage people to, the soonest you can, fill out the online uh, initial claim form is what it's called. I'll have that link available and you'll already be in the hopper for when the system uh, goes live. An important thing to know for your financial planning, because uh, many of you are worried that with each day that passes, you're passing up uh, the benefits which the federal uh, legislation entitles you to. The, I, I hesitate to say good news since we've got this delay, but the fact is 
you will be eligible starting retroactive to the week beginning March 29th. So it will go back to uh, last, effectively last Monday, and that's when the uh, start date is. The legislation passed just two days earlier, on a, or three days earlier on a Friday. It was signed very late at night by President Trump two Fridays ago. So basically, last week and this week will be the first two weeks of benefits to which you will be entitled and you will receive, even if it took two more weeks for you to fill out the form and get the final check from the Department of Labor. So the sooner you get in, the more comfort you'll have that you're you know that the Department of Labor knows who you are, where you are, and what your circumstances are. You can get through some of the bugs of filling out the form because most of you have not filled out an unemployment form before in your lives. So get through the bumps and uh, you'll probably have some questions and it'll allow you to be answered and then you'll be able to submit the initial form and the benefits will be re retroactive to March 29th. The other uh, piece is while you cannot uh, yet really know what your weekly benefit will be, the one that's calculated based on your income, what you will know is that you are going to get $600 a week on top of whatever else you're eligible for. So from a financial planning point of view, you should operate under the assumption, if you're self-employed or an independent contractor, that you are going to get $600 plus for last week, $600 plus for this week, in every week moving forward. That applies for self-employed and independent contractors and also some people who have worked a little bit but not enough to qualify under normal unemployment rules. So many people, uh, despite the frustrating wait, will receive some desperately needed um, cash to help you pay your bills. Um, feel free to ask me questions offline if um, that isn't uh, clear enough to you. Uh, and I will uh, make sure that I do whatever I can to help. The other thing, I've had some questions from people who were on unemployment insurance already uh, because they had um, lost their job for some reason prior to um, COVID-19, and they were about to run out of their eligibility, their number of weeks, and they ask if they're still eligible to collect any benefit. Um, the short answer is yes. Obviously, right now is not an easy time to be uh, on the job search. And so the federal legislation has extended the uh, length of time someone can collect unemployment to, I believe, 39 weeks, so an additional quarter um, of the calendar year. This is similar to what happened during the stimulus bill when people who wanted to work just couldn't find jobs. So if you're running out of weeks, um, you, while we still hope you will be able to find work um, relatively soon, um, your, your benefit uh, will not be cut off. It'll be extended for another 13 weeks. Um, that All the people who are already in the unemployment system, so including people who've been laid off as a result of this crisis, the $600 additional check that I described earlier in the context of self-employed and independent contractors is also going to be sent to people who are collecting unemployment insurance that $600 check will also be retroactive to March 29th. So March 29th, that week, which ended this past Friday or Saturday, you'll get 600 bucks for that week. You'll get 600 bucks for this week, 600 on top of your normal benefit for each week moving forward. Um, so hopefully that helps uh, you think about what your financial situation is. And the good news for those who are already in the system is you do not need to do anything extra to get that $600 check. It will just show up in one of your benefit checks moving forward, including the retroactive one. So I have um, felt the stress and anxiety of literally hundreds and hundreds of people as they've called me and emailed me in the last just couple weeks. And I wanna let you know that Vermont state government and it's, it's both the Scott administration and the legislature, we totally understand what you're going through and we'll react instantaneously uh, when we find out uh, the moment that you're able to start getting the, the cash uh, submitted to you. Um, that said, uh, we are still trying to uh, encourage the administration, the Scott administration, to boost the resources at the Department of Labor so that they can handle all these calls and uh, emails that are coming in and the online form. 
uh, because it's so frustrating when people fill out a form and it crashes halfway. So we're still on them. Uh, I think they're, they're doing the best that they know how to do, and uh, hopefully we can bring some additional expertise on to, to get them even uh, more uh, successful um, to get it through. The um, other frustrating thing is for the people who are still working, many of whom are doing things that put them at great risk, uh, some have contacted me and said, wait a sec, other people get 600 on top of their unemployment benefit, but I'm not getting 600 bucks and I'm actually going to work. How is that fair? And I don't have a great response other than to say the federal government did what it did. Um, we were not the ones who wrote the law. We're the ones who are on the receiving end. And what we are trying to do is find a way through the state uh, legislature and we'll work with the governor's team to provide some kind of hazard uh, or you know, pandemic pay bump so that those who continue to show up for work uh, and put themselves at risk will not be the only ones who don't seem to be getting some kind of extra federal relief. So in the days ahead, I hope to have more to report to you on that. I've um, assigned four members of the Senate uh, from both political parties to come together and really try to uh, work with our fiscal team to see what the options are. So I'm very hopeful we'll be able to pull something off. I don't have anything to report just yet, but um, hang in there for those of you who are uh, doing everything you can. I want to talk a little bit briefly now uh, about, I got three more things before I wrap. The first, uh, I want to put in perspective the latest um, financial information for the current state budget year. So on previous updates, I've probably bored some of you to tears. I hope uh, you weren't listening while you were driving. Um, about how our state budget year goes from July 1st to June 30th. So we're about three quarters of the way through the state budget. And because of the suddenness of this crisis from an economic point of view, we are not in good financial shape right now. And to put it in perspective, um, I'm going to just rattle off a few numbers. These are hopefully illust illustrate for you the challenge that we have in the legislature working with the governor's team to figure out the finances as we move move along here. The first thing is for the fourth quarter of the state fiscal year, the one we're about to be in, we expect income tax collections to be down $200 million from what we had expected. So $200 million uh, in the grand scheme of the federal budget would be like dust in the wind. In Vermont, $200 million is a massive amount of money. So that's a challenge we're going to have to figure out. Rooms and meals tax, the tax that people pay when they um, rent a, a, a night's room at a hotel or a B&B, &B, uh, and the meals tax every time you buy a prepared meal at a, um, at a restaurant, down $30 million for the next three-month period. Our state's education fund, which uh, receives both property tax payments and sales and use and a variety of other taxes to pay for our school system is down $142 million for the next three months. And our transportation fund, which pays for basically everything uh, that falls under the self-obvious category of transportation, but includes public transit, rail, um, road projects, bridges, and so on, down $43 million. Uh, and that one, I'll just briefly explain what the contributing factors are. The gas tax is collecting about 12 million less than was previously anticipated. Obviously people aren't driving to work in the way they were. 12 million dollars less in purchase and use tax, which is effectively the sales tax you pay when you buy a car. So people are obviously not out there and the auto dealerships have been required to close for sales. So 12 million dollar reduction in purchase and use tax. And 16 million dollar reduced motor vehicle fees um, there are a whole range of fees paid for by people like me and you, people who drive commercial trucks, uh, and that is down 60 million. So I tell you all these numbers not to scare you or uh, uh, be alarmist, but to say that the challenges from a fiscal point of view, once we get through the public health crisis, are not going to be insignificant and much of the money we get from the federal government will not be allowed to be used for just whatever we want and it's not going to be we think allowed to just backfill our revenues that are down so 
um, if there is one uh, silver lining, and I don't, I don't even know how I can say this out loud, there is no silver lining, but let me just say that um, the Great Recession, which was about 10 years ago, um, state government in Vermont has some not distant uh, experience trying to work our way through some very savage economic times. So hopefully some of the lessons we learned then will apply now. And in terms of some of the uh, crisis response and all the surge hospital facilities and all those things that we're doing uh, to quickly get out and keep people from being infected, uh, take care of people with acute symptoms, it is not unlike our immediate response after Tropical Storm Irene. So in that sense, we also have some experience helping people uh, at local communities and hospitals and others figure out how to draw down the most federal emergency management money. So hopefully our experience in recent years will help us, um, but um, you know, I guess history will judge. Two other things. Uh, first off, uh, Birchwood Terrace. I've mentioned that Birchwood Terrace on North Avenue in Burlington has had uh, a really difficult outbreak and now, in addition to the 26 residents who have tested positive for COVID-19, 22 of their employees have tested positive. They're testing everybody. So um, that is a very high number. And obviously, um, nursing home facilities uh, and recovery care facilities are very staff dependent. So 22 people down uh, is a real problem. Uh, I want to commend UVM Medical Center for having some of their staff fill the gaps at Birchwood Terrace, um, which is a sign of how our healthcare uh, professionals are all banding together and really responding wherever the need is and uh, putting aside, uh, you know, the affiliation on the badge that they wear and really just going wherever they can be the most useful. So uh, thank you to the UVM Medical Center crew for stepping up and uh, obviously we're sending our uh, best thoughts to Birchwood Terrace and uh, all the staff and, and uh, patients there and their families to make sure that as many people can get through this healthy as possible. And last, um, yesterday, uh, my third day of thanks and appreciation, it was a, a, a weekend of uh, expressing gratitude. Um, one senator got his uh, recommended person to be recognized uh, to me just a little bit late after I had finished wrapping up the video. And so Bobby Starr, who lives in North Troy in the Northeast Kingdom and represents Orleans and Essex in the state Senate, uh, wanted me to uh, mention that Catherine Sims, who lives in Craftsbury and runs the Northeast Kingdom Collaborative, the NEK Collaborative, has been doing just an amazing job coordinating the community response, uh, developing a resource list for all the people in the uh, kingdom towns hosting weekly check-in calls with all the organizations and groups that provide services uh, so that you know it's as efficient as possible getting people what they need. So I uh, want to acknowledge uh, Catherine on behalf of Senator Starr and the Northeast Kingdom Collaborative crew who are doing such great work. So with that, I'm going to wrap. I want to thank you for uh, listening in. Uh, do want to ask you, um, if you have the time, go back and listen to the uh, last three videos. I think you'll find they were all submitted to me by others, by either constituents, people around the state, uh, or members of the Senate on my video yesterday. And I find it, I've listened to them, I've gone back just so I can hear the names of people and the organizations who have been putting, uh, putting their best selves forward to meet this crisis head on. And uh, I think it really speaks to uh, the resilience of our state and how people really do lend a hand to one another in the greatest greatest sense uh, of, of Vermont's uh, tradition and value. So I'm going to sign off for now. Tomorrow I'll give uh, more updates on what's going on with the state. Hopefully I'll have some more information uh, from the Department of Labor and the Agency of Commerce uh, about uh, tools to get people the resources they need. Uh, and in the meantime, uh, I've got to remind you the uh, cloth masks are being, uh, the directive is to wear cloth masks when you're in public doing uh, essential um, uh, grocery shopping and things like that, and it's 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 not the most uh, customary thing for uh, people in our country to do, and sometimes it might feel awkward. But um, you know, each time you put that on, you could literally prevent someone from getting sick and ultimately dying. And I think if you put it in that perspective, each time you throw it on, you'll probably be like me, a little less vain when you throw throw on something 
uh, and worry if you look you look uh, look a little unusual. So get past that, keep people safe, and I'll check in with you tomorrow.